Hi everyone, welcome to Play is a Child's Work. Um, this video is so long overdue and I am uh, so sorry about that because, you know, um, with us going back and forth between my parents and my in-laws, it's just that my books have been um, divided and I thought while I have the chance, I'm going to quickly show you some of the books that we use for the second grade lesson. So, um, to start with, there were two that, you know, people specifically um, uh, requested me to compare and then I'm also going to show you some of the other books that we have. Um, so, let's get started. Okay, so this one is hands down my favorite book for the second grade lesson. I think I have mentioned this one quite a few times. Uh, the reason I absolutely love it is because um, there are three reasons. The first is that it has just a little bit of text. It's not too overwhelming and it just gives you um, the basic information for, you know, each age that um, occurred and with illustrations shows you what were the kind of animals um that existed in that period and um the second reason i really like this book is like the whole book it opens up in length so you know you can just keep um pulling it open and this would take up you know, like if for us it takes up our entire living room so it's fantastic and um, I mean, yeah you can see the illustrations are gorgeous and the third reason i really like it is the flip side of this just sorry one second the flip side of this timeline is blank so it's really great for you know if you want to do some cutouts and you want your children to um, place it on a uh, blank timeline this one is already built in and for its price this is a great investment um, because if you buy timeline resources um, a lot of them are priced you know five six thousand even more so um for the price like if you see this is 26 feet it opens up entirely i think this is a great investment uh this is the second book that we have this one is called how life on earth began um and it is just really really pretty and i, I mean when it's really interactive as well so when it shows you um it has 10 10 sections uh but re what's really cool is um like you have lift the flaps and uh, I love these. You have like these little, like, you know, beautiful um, kind of translucent papers that just kind of adds beauty. So this has a little bit more text, of course, and is a lot more detailed, uh, but it is very beautifully made. So if you, um, you know, um, want to get both, that's fine because they, this one, the information it covers is not in the other book because this talks a lot about like this is honestly the first and the second grade lesson because here you can see it talks about how the earth takes shape how the moon was formed there was a sea of lava and um up here it has um you know like how many million years ago was this so again it's a fantastic uh, book for kids to have and then it talks about how life first began and then eventually this is where the second book kind of you know the, the one i just showed you starts from because that one is specifically for coming of life uh, this is for the first and the second so how earth began or how earth was born and then the coming of life on it and it ends with i'm gonna just show. so you see these like these papers are just so beautiful and i do let you know, Shorter used all his books because he is very, very careful with his books. And I think he is the person who would, you know, this is for him. So a lot of, you know, a lot of parents do reach out sometimes and they're worried that, you know, but it's a fantastic book. What if my child tears it? But I think you have to give them that responsibility and trust and know that they can take care um, of their own books. So he talks about the great extinction. Uh, the megafauna and um, yeah it ends with the coming of the human so basically this is where your third grade lesson in Montessori would start it's the third one this one my parents just gifted shorter for his birthday um, and he in general loves these DK books so he has now I think all four and um you know these are just really really friendly formats for younger kids so it is just a two-page format with one side is normally illustrated and just that much text 
and it's great for when your kids want to look up a particular um you know um concept or something that they want to read more on and while this says only dinosaurs and fossils it does like include a lot of stuff from again like you know um when earth was born and the coming of the humans the coming of the dinosaurs um like Shara loves helicoprines um, maybe because they look like sharks or they were sharks oh it wasn't it was closely related to modern ratfish okay see things i didn't know but that's why we love books because there is only so much that you can know and um I think these kind of books are great when you have um, kids who are really, really interested in taking a book and reading it by themselves because um, with all DK books, and I've said this before, I've reviewed um, quite a few of them, is uh, this one also has a tree of life, which I think is really cool, um, like the Ben Hore one and um, the pronunciation guide. But what I always love about these books is the visual guide um, because, you know, sometimes kids may not know how to say a word or even read it but they can easily point to it and say oh i'd like to know more about this like what 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 is that and then, so i think this one is a really really um nice book to have it uh, and it isn't as detailed as a lot of the dk encyclopedias which is why i always recommend um this series because it isn't overwhelming um i feel like the dk encyclopedias are fantastic books but I also feel like they are for older children sometimes because they just have so much information to take in on every page. Like, you know, there are like little tidbits and it's just a lot to read. So I, I feel like these are great books to have um, in your home library. So this one, I didn't honestly even know about it. And then Monica from Sadia Treasures um, was like, I think this is one that Shorter will like, and she's absolutely right. Um, so this one is a Smithsonian uh, book, and it's not very thick, which is great. But, um, okay, again, this one is really detailed by period. So I feel like this is a great addition to have to the Clemens uh, DuPont uh, book, the first one that I showed you. Um, it's, so it basically talks about every time period and what was happening then so this is a like a supplement i would say if you know you want to look up a particular time period because um like a lot of books have animals and um even the previous one i showed you with the dk book um you know it has a lot of animals but it's always good to also have by period so you know um what was specific to every period especially for children like like for shorter he's in the second plane um, which is six to twelve years um they do a lot of research themselves like it is child-led um the the montessori so it's great for him to have access to these books because then he can look it up and know that, okay, this is something, you know, um, I wanted to know about and then find something else he wants to read about. And that's actually how I place his reference books so that um, um, he finds his way from one to the other. Um, because this is actually some advice that was given to me, I think, by his um, school principal in Bombay. And they're like, they're a fantastic Montessori. So I learned a lot from them. Um, that... You know, in today's day and age, with a lot of us adults, like information is on our fingertips. So it's really easy when someone asks us something, we say, well, I don't know. But you can either Google it or you can ask Alexa. But um, she said, while that is an option, it it's important for children to learn how to find information for themselves. And it's also more like than finding the answer is also about the process. It gives them that feeling of joy and contentment that they have found it out by themselves and they've put in all that effort to look for it um which is why i whenever we do a great lesson i always rotate his books and i put quite a few reference books out um just so if he has any question i'm pretty sure it's covered in these fantastic books you know i don't um need to look it up so that happens really really rarely there are just a few books left which i'm going to go through fairly quickly um this one i have shared on my page and um this one is also really budget friendly and the whole thing opens up if you see um but this is only like for dinosaurs so it's great if you have a dinosaur lover shorter has always found dinosaurs extremely fascinating and i think for each period like especially 
you know, in the Jurassic and the Triassic periods and the Cretaceous periods, he wanted to know which dinosaurs really existed. So um, this is a really cool book. It doesn't have, I mean, it has some information if you, you know, flip on the other side, like it'll tell you where they were found, um, their size, whether they were herbivores or carnivores or omnivores, but it's not very um, information heavy. But visually, and I think visual, um, you know, um, tools are very important for children. So I think this book, um, for its price, honestly, it is absolutely fantastic. So oh, this one, now, now Sid always, like a lot of people ask me, how many books do you need? And you really don't need a lot of books. Like I said, if you were to get only one, you could get the first one that I showed you. Um, but, you know, it's always nice to have books that, and this is what I say, when I add a book to our collection, I always look at, is it bringing in something new or is it, um, you know, the same information? Because I don't want redundant information, but I do want that information um, either presented in different ways or it's supplementing what we already have. And I hope that you've seen through this video how each of the books that I have is different. So this one is called um, The Prehistoric uh, Mega Beast and it's by Robert Sabuda. Actually, my best friend gave me one of uh, his books and um, that's when I came to know of the pop-up magic that he does. So I found this one pre-loved and I think it was a fantastic find. I, I'm, I'm that person who gets super excited by, um, you know, fantastic um, bar games. So like, yeah. I just feel like a lot of people may say, do you need this? No, but I just like when I saw it, I, I knew Shorter would absolutely love it um, because who doesn't love cool pop-ups and I just have to be careful with the closing, sorry. And then here we go. Um, let me show you. So this one I think has like... Um, skeleton so you're supposed to just you know press it down and then each side has something here so if you see each side opens up and has like a pop-up so you know if you can see here this is a mega slot and in front of him this is like a little turtle um so yeah it's just a really really cool book if you can find it um pre-loved i would highly recommend you do get it i think um a new book is about 2000 i'm not sure uh, but i got this one for 500 so of course i had to add it to our library one um, is again for the second grade lesson how animals evolved from the prehistoric seas um, it's not this one is quite um, reasonably priced uh, book and um, so I actually debated whether I needed to keep it or not and again um, the reason I kept it was I thought it like explain like it was in a story version of how life really began so if you look at the timelines um that i shared like the clemens dupont book or the smithsonian book it talks about each period it talks about animals but this one really explains like you know what happened so like in the restless seas the microbes slowly slowly changed they became more complex they began to convert sunlight into energy and produce oxygen until finally at last gulp one microbe swallowed another. Strange, squishy creatures evolved. They began to hunt. The race was on, eat or be eaten. And that was only the beginning because next came. And I think it's just such a beautiful like way to explain the second great lesson. Like they came to an explosion. You look at all the animals. And um, yeah, I, I really like this version of the telling of the book because of course you do narrate it. But I also think it's really nice to be able to read the story and, um, you know, make it really animated. And it's just so interesting. So it's not a very big book. But, um, yeah, I, I personally really, really like this one. And then here's another one I got from Monica in Sadia Treasures. She always knows the kind of books that um, Shara will like. Okay, so this we have another one 
which is the creatures of the order which if you've seen when we did the taxonomy um uh unit uh we use that so this one is for the prehistoric creatures um we haven't used this very much but i feel like we will it talks about the various um, animals that could be grouped like the microsora and i feel like this is something he will come to we haven't like really reached this part yet and i i don't know if it's going to be in the next time i tell the story or the one after um but it's really cool to um you know look visually at a family and then see which animals were part of it and um the reason i got this was because i said we have the other one for um animals that exist today not prehistoric creatures and it was really cool because you can actually see which animals are family and some are surprising and of course some are not but um it's always good to visually be able to see um this information and then the last book that i wanted to share is again a new one that we got so we haven't started reading this one it's called the dinosaur empire and um yeah it's really so the reason i got this one let me move this one is um this one is kind of like a graphic novel so it's something that we don't have and uh, there are three so i got this one just to see if we would like it because this is about the mesozoic era and i think i will get the others because this is just um a fun way to you know read what was happening and um it's more conversational right so but of course it's gonna take you time to read this with your child unless they're reading it by themselves but all it's more like a kind of like a chapter book but like a graphic book so um yeah if your child is really interested in prehistoric creatures coming of life um this is something you can look into as well um so that's it that's all the books that we have for the second grade lesson some of them also are for the first um and let me know if you enjoyed this video and you need any more help um look forward to hearing from you take care bye um here's one that i missed um so a lot of my books are very focused on animals uh, but this one is uh, more about the plant evolution um so i think it's a nice one to have because um it talks about how the journey began and again here are your timelines and what kind of plants started appearing and um yeah then how the the plant tree of life i know a lot of I, well it's not um common or i'm not sure uh but uh, like Shara is really interested in animals but um he hasn't really show the same kind of interest in plants as yet um but i just wanted this book um you know so that we're ready to kind of explore it more when we do the um the second great lesson this time around um because um i feel like this is also very very interesting to kind of see you know when seed plants surfaced or where did flowers really come from like like conifers of course existed but you know when flowers flourished and like um, charles darwin described the sudden appearance of flowers in the fossil record as an um, abominable mystery so of course the same a century later the puzzle of how the first flowers evolved still has scientists scratching their heads so i think this is a really interesting book to have um, especially if you want to um dive deeper into the plant um evolution 